On this podcast, it's Anthony Prophet, the commercial director of the Brit Fest. On the Sands Showbiz podcast today, it's Anthony Prophet, commercial director of the Brit Fest. Hello, Anthony. Thank you, and hello. Uh, it's a big pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Nigel. Brilliant. Um, you've got a partnership going as well. It's a family affair, isn't it, the Brit? It is. It's me and my brother, my younger brother, Ed. Um, recent recent father, so he's not with me today. He's uh, he's on dad duty. But yeah, it's Ed and I. We uh, we curated and founded and then managed the festival yeah. um, thus far. So yeah, a nice family operation. And we draft everybody in as well. It's uh, In fact, if we can find any any tenuous links to anyone, really, they're, they're, they're on the team. <laughs> <laughs> How did the actual thought of doing this project and this business how did it all come about and when that seed was set what happened well it, it's really it, it's bizarre really because being our background was hospitality it was music production we'd done with uh, been promoters we did a lot of musical theater and like yeah. most businesses when 2020 came around things had to change quite quickly uh we were running a number of venues at the time which we still do and we needed to scale up and we weren't sure quite how to do that. So we looked at doing a small one day yeah. outdoor festival where what would typically be, let's say, 500 people that was now 100 due to the restrictions that were in place. Yeah. Could we could that work? And we had some big names. Anyhow, the long and short of it was we couldn't make it work. The regulations kept changing, but we had this idea that we could potentially scale up. Yeah. And we found a venue that worked. We'd found some artists that we prepared to work with. So then we, we got on with business and, and things came back to some sense of normality, but we still had that sort of seed burning away. Yeah. And we were in a cafe not too far from here and, and it was just Ed and myself. And it's like, maybe we should we should do that now. Maybe we should try a one day, a, you know, yeah. a small one day festival. So we scribbled it down and it's, well, maybe this would work. Maybe this artist, maybe this. And then within about an hour of chatting, it became a three day absolute mahusive, <laughs> um, internationally recognized, award winning yeah. um, music festival, which is an absolute Northwest staple after just one year. Yeah. Um, and, and we're delighted with the feedback from people, the, the amount of emails, even today, we're getting from people that are coming and traveling from all over the British Isles. Um, it's just a delight. And, and the project, it's the most full-time, full-time job I've ever had. I'm not going to lie. You know, it's yeah. it's intense. Um, yeah. And the portrayal that we have to have on the surface is that we're this team of 20 and we're in this big, fabulous office and it's all amazing and someone makes the tea and drives <laughs> me home. I can assure you it's quite the opposite. So it's... Um, it, it, you know, it's it's hard work. It's extremely rewarding. It's extremely enjoyable. Um, and and to do it alongside my brother at that you know at that level is it's it's a privilege actually. Yeah. Do you get on all right then, you two? Yeah, we've we've worked together for uh, over twelve years. We've we've been in business. This is probably our eighth business that we've we've done together over those years. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've got a good experience of each other's um, strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Did you learn a lot from the first one? Obviously. It was sort of see how it goes, I suppose, wasn't it? And and learning on, along the way. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's it's there's so many false controls that you think you have on a project like this, and the reality is you have none. Um, you know, we we can only do what we can do. We can put tickets on sale. We can confirm the artist. We can build a stage. We can put a fabulous venue together, but we don't know what the weather's going to be like. We didn't know that England were going to get through to the quarterfinals. We didn't know there was going to be a general election. There were so many things that happened through the yeah. course of time. Um, however, that being said, it was it was an amazing first event. And against a lot of challenges, I must say, that came out in what we call the closeout, it never really happened for us because those that had tickets were committed and they would come, of course, but those that were planning on it, and then all of a sudden think, well, I can't miss the football. And, you know, the, I think the, the, the media which we rely so heavily on, particularly hyper-locally, were so committed to the uh, election project that we just right. got lost a little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can understand that. And they're the things that you just can never control. Um, and as, as we've uh, briefly discussed, you know, we're, we're the same weekend as other big festivals and, and things like that in the area. So you're always, you're always up against the wave of sorts. Yeah. You've just got to be relentless. You can't stop. You've got to keep believing in what you do. Don't, we could we could never go too far off our real plan because if we started to try and adapt, then we're no longer our our festival that we've created. You know, you become something for somebody else, and we didn't want to do that. So yeah, we pushed through year one. It was a big success. We had some massive names uh, that we brought to 
brought to the showgrounds, um, Bonnie Tyler, Kim Wilde. I mean, this was on, on one day, it was like this heritage masterpiece. <laughs> Paul Young, I mean, I, I just won't reel them off because there was too many. Um, yeah, but this year, I think we'd like to say we've we've matched it and maybe raised it slightly. How do you choose the actual date that you're going to have the gigs on? How's that well, come the, about? The the weekend of choice comes many, many months, maybe 10, 12 months ahead when we apply for our license. And the local authorities, they they sort of, they know what, what will put a big demand, whether it's on local infrastructure, road networks and things like that. And then we're sort of boxed into what would be a, a preferential weekend. And uh, yeah, and, and that's, that's how we did it last year. And we felt it was it was logical and rational to do it on the same weekend again. Um, it just put us up against some pretty stiff competition. Uh, there's yeah. no question of it. But uh, but you know what? Everything's competition, isn't it? You know, Aunt Joyce's 60th competition or the weddings are competition. So we've only got, God dare I say, five weeks of summer that we can do these in. So yeah, a little bit risk, um, prepared to take a risk on a little bit of that with the dates yeah. for sure. So have you sort of got the artists sorted out now? Is it like set in stone or is there other artists could come along? Well, the main main stage and the, the main bill is done. So that was that's where Ed is just comes into his own. We, we had a bill to complete and he went out there and he just brought in what I think is an amazing yeah. variety. It stays very much on on point with what last year was, but it but it just adds that that nice kind of range that you know, the chances are, if you like that, you like that too. And if you, if you like that, but you might not know much about that, but you will when you arrive. So it sounds a bit wishy-washy, but I think the bill really works. So the main stage bill is done. Yeah. As the festival grows, it, we will then start to grow potentially other areas. We're going to have busk points, uh, which we've not announced yet, but we'll, we'll bring in local artists. It'll be more acoustic led than the second stage was last year. Um, and then as the festival grows, we can then enhance the dance tent if required, depending on numbers um, and, and so on. And I think there's trigger points now on ticket sale uh, levels that will trigger a little bit of infrastructure growth. Yeah. Last year, we built a stadium the size of Wembley. It was probably slightly too big. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's on the 4th, 5th and the 6th, isn't it? It's over a weekend. It's Friday to Sunday. Yeah, um, Friday to Sunday. On July. Um, that's quite easy to remember, isn't it? So then the, the acts come in. You get those dates and then you go through the diary with people who can actually try and attend or artists that you can get. Is, it, is that how it works? Pretty much. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's not as easy as it sounds. You'd like to think it was, but um, I guess these touring artists, they've only got a certain period of the summer as well where they can they can really make their, their money. So they've then got to think of the geography. They can't compete within a certain area around that. Um, we had our We had our hit list. Uh, and we're pretty much on what we'd what we'd set out to achieve really by looking at what worked well last year yeah. what people are going to what artists are selling who's in vogue at the moment that can be quite important as well um there was artists that had to cancel last year tom bailey's a good example of that who halfway through the year was offered i, I suspect quite a lucrative american tour so he couldn't perform. We swapped him and then he's back this year. So things things can change. Things can remain fluid. But as it stands today, the, the poster that you see and that we're, hopefully we can share with your, your viewers and listeners is, is our bill for 2025. Right. So you got all that sorted out. What can people expect as well as the music on the stage? Have you got other facilities and other things going on? Absolutely. Um, I think for anyone with any festival experience um, will we'll know that when they arrive at a festival site, you, you typically arriving at a much bigger site than just a gig. Yeah. Um, so within that, you have a lot of experiences, a lot of activities, things for all the family. We've got to be mindful that you're there potentially for three days. So there's a lot of time to entertain uh, people. So yeah, there's, there's activities, there's fairground rides, there's, there's, um, things we call mindful moments now we had a mindful meadow last year it was in one place this year we're going to move it around so at certain yeah. times throughout the day you can you can just sit back you can do some breathing exercises some yoga meditation there's all these quirky little things going on around the site that if you choose to get right involved with the activities above and beyond the main stage yeah you can be busy all weekend in yeah. fact in the campsite uh, this year we've we've really enhanced the the level of experience so you can you can book your sauna every morning you can have your cold plunge wow you know you can go and do a, a fitness class play volleyball and this and this is all before the main stage arena opens at midday so what was the highlight of the last one that you did then is there a highlight that you can 
that springs to mind every time you think, oh, that was the moment? <sighs> On a personal level, there was that moment actually. Um, but but it wasn't it wasn't about the music and I, and I'll describe the moment and hopefully it, the passion and you can really sense the emotion because it was so deep for me that when we'd finished the festival on the Sunday night we we all had a lot of closing jobs my my closing job was I was in my high vis getting the last people on the last shuttle bus yeah so we were all busy till about twelve o'clock and we'd got loads of drinks loads of cakes and we we're all due to meet back in the office and when we walked back into that office there was maybe 30, 40 of the core team. And everybody cheered, everybody clapped. And, and it, it was so emotional and it was so beautiful because what mm. we'd achieved and what we'd delivered and what we'd been part of was massive. Um, and, and I think we couldn't ignore that as a, as a team, it was very special. And that, that moment will stay with me forever. It was, it was enormous. Um, yeah. yeah. I feel all the yeah. pressure come out. I mean, all the build up, it's taken a, it takes a lot of time, as you said. And then all that comes out, doesn't it? At the end of it, it's like a massive... <sighs> it was exactly that yeah it was two two well at least two years in the planning you know there was there was a there was so many different cogs that had to turn at the same time to get to that point and it, and it was that big <sighs> yeah um, and then you know the very next day we had to have some very real conversations about doing it all over again <laughs> and then it starts again yeah is there something you're really looking forward to then to 2025 you know at the next one is there something that you think oh this is going to be so so good Maybe you well, can't tell us what it is, but you know what I mean? There's so many. I mean, just I've got the bill up behind the screen here. and I can just see some names that spring out. And fortunately, I got to go to a lot of music festivals this summer in research and planning and things like that. And I got to watch UB4 with Ali Campbell down in Southampton. And it was an absolute masterclass of a performance. To think that we can contribute to, to 15,000 other people having that same experience, it's, yeah. it's a deeply moving feeling actually yeah and to be part of that and know that we've been quite instrumental in 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 putting that together is yeah it, that, that's 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 a good special feeling and it makes it all worthwhile honestly yeah there's a lot of transport links as well to get there isn't it because people who are listening and watching this are going to think how do we get there and i found it's quite easy on the map isn't it really when you look at it you're not a million miles away from manchester airport and the connections seem to be all there we're, I'd like to think we're in an extremely good uh, location. This, this site had never been used for numbers like this before. And most people that came who got in touch with us were just blown away by the amazing, um, just the movement of, around the site, the infrastructure, the hard ground that's in, the car parking. It's so good. And that's just when you're there to get to the site. Superb. You're, you're minutes off the M6, minutes off the M56. We actually use um, our partner hotel is the Delta Marriott, which is at Manchester Airport. Yeah. Because within, dare I say, depending on traffic, less than eight minutes, you're from Manchester Airport to our festival site. Yeah. And that's quite, it's quite unique as well, because you can, if you're there for the weekend camping, you can walk in 15 minutes to a village. Well, there's not many festivals that give you that option, really. No. And then our nearest biggest town is Ultramim, and that's only two miles away. Yeah. Can people get there on the train? Yeah, train to Hale Station. We have shuttle buses all weekend. So that's that's the sort of level of detail when people are into when they're booked and they're planning it, that'll all come out nearer the time. Yeah, but yeah, you've got lots of um a lot of detail there um that, that will come out through the website and things like that. So if you're going in the car, have you got like a field set aside or something for car parking? Or how's that work? We do. The, the, the ground space is huge. We've got 120 acres that we uh, were responsible for over that weekend. Yeah. Um, enormous car parks. Camping includes your parking, so you can turn up, dump your car, empty your boot, set your tent up, and you, you're good to go. So, yeah, we, we're, not, we're not short on space. We're, uh, we're not stuck on, yeah. on, on growth as well, which is quite important. How's the sales been going then for the tickets? Because you had your first launch, didn't you, your first wave? Are you on your second wave now, is it, or how's it all working? Yeah, we we we're on internally. We're on wave three. We had a we had a pre-sale which came yeah. out just after the the festival, and it was for ticket holders that had been and had a good time. And it was an an opportunity to say to them, look, if you loved it that much and want to come back, here's a little bit of a thank you. It's a nice little discount, but it gets the it gets the ball rolling. It gets the the corporate element to this sort of back into place so so quickly. We launched the tickets officially on the 4th of October, phase one, really well received. Um, what I've noticed, it tends to be from people outside the localities that are part of these waves. Mm. Today was wave two. Um, and 
I, I'm honestly today has absolutely blown me away with the level of uptake from people. It, it's honestly, it's it's Scotland, it's South of England, it's Wales. It's it's become this national draw now to yeah. to little old little old Hale and Ashley, and it's just ace. It's the potential though to become one of the biggest gigs in the northwest, don't you think? Yeah, I think we know our we know our position within the market. We we know where we sit at the moment. I think we're not let's use some names. We're not a rhythm. We're not that kind of festival. We're not, um, you know, these big t- traveling international bands. We're not that. So knowing what we are, particularly with focus at the moment on heritage acts, um, we can certainly become that. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and that's where commercially we're positioning ourselves. I've noticed that you have more artists on than other gigs though, as you know, you, is that intended? I was amazed at how many artists were actually going to it. Yeah, it was uh, caused us a few problems last year. <laughs> <laughs> we we were trying to create genuine value, and and in truth, if you know, not it's great doing podcasts like this because you can talk a little bit from the heart. And yes, did we have too many acts last year? We probably did. Um, but what great value it was for the ticket holders, yeah. but logistically and from a production sense, it was very difficult. So we've reduced the number of acts only slightly this year on the main stage, just to give them a better stage opportunity. Yeah. You know, we were sound checking bands behind the screen on stage while there was a set going on. And then within five minutes, they were on stage and it was near on impossible um, yeah. for the production team to get a five minute rest. So yeah, we, we had to be mindful of that, but we've reduced it slightly, but we'd like to think we upped the ante with, with the headliners this year. Yeah, so. and, and these artists have got more than two or three songs in the in the case, haven't they, really? Yeah, they do. Want. They certainly do this year, that's for sure. Yeah, so it's going to be great. Um, is it like an 80s and a 90s theme of one night and an 80s on another night? Is that how it works? <laughs> Again, unintentional, really. I think um, we'd all be lying if we said we didn't do projects like this with an element of self-indulgence. And I think when, when we first launched, the 90s was the period of music that I just grew up and, and loved. Uh, and if you look at the Friday last year, you can see it was, I remember walking down the um, the little boulevard backstage with all the cabins and I just thought, my God, my 17 year old self would be so proud of this. You know, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, so we, we could, I think we, we pretty much booked every band that had ever had a hit in the 90s last year. It was not like, so we, we didn't want it to become too much 90s 80s and mixed but but it's got a gentle sway of that and i think yeah. with the headliners particularly you can see that but in truth yeah. i think it's it's anyone born after 1980 would absolutely be delighted to to be there and just enjoy it the 80s is my sort of era and uh you know instantly when i was reading through the names i thought wow you know it's there's yeah. so many artists from the 80s it's brilliant it's great, isn't it? And and I think that's that's how I think particularly the, the the busy day Saturday, and it tends to be the day, you know, with people's commitments and things. Yeah. That 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 we can't bill it as an eighties day because I don't think it does. You know, a lot of these artists still have very relevant music. Yeah. But those that did love them in the eighties, well, there's no better day, is there? Really? How do uh, people get a ticket then? Is what's the best way? Online, definitely, isn't it? But best way, they- all online. So. Get us followed on the socials. We're at Ampersand across all these the Brit Fest UK website is the the the, the bit is really quite important. The Britfest.co.uk. Um, you'll get a really good understanding of what we do. There's a news and media button on there, which has got some great pictures from last year. Um, if you came or your friends came, try and find them. There's some great crowd picks, and then right next to that, click the ticket button. Um, and uh, yeah, you're in. But you can come for the day, you can come for the weekend, you can camp, you can glamp, you can you can even have posh toilets. Whatever you want, <laughs> we've, uh, we've got it this year for you to, to come and have the best experience. I'll be all right for Mrs. C then when I bring her along. She'll be exactly. in the posh toilets. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, so it's great. Uh, can pe- people sort of follow you on the social media then as the build-up? Do you get out, going out on social all the time? I mean, when the stage starts going up and all that? Absolutely. Yeah. The stories, I mean, we're, we're quite active. Well, we're very active actually, particularly at the moment as we, as we get the announcements out, but uh, we're active all year round. Um, but as, as the build starts, the stories really do start. So if, if a bit like me, you're a bit of a Meccano geek and like all that sort of stuff, it's uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got a, a favorite social media that everybody should follow? Yes. Yeah, Facebook and Instagram seem to be the two big ones at the moment. Um, I think of our, our age group seems to prefer Facebook at the moment, don't they? Um, yeah. seems to be a little bit more. Confusing, it's funny, but, isn't yeah. it? How each social media has a certain sort of age group to it. I've noticed that. It does. 
Well, we're yeah. rubbish on TikTok. Says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be great fun then. I can't wait for uh, to come. It'll come so quickly for you guys though, because you'll be working all the time. I suppose time flies, doesn't it? It does. It, it absolutely. It just rockets by, and we, you know, now our next step now is to ensure that the vendors are confirmed. Then we've got to make sure that the the site infrastructure is confirmed, and everyone books so far in advance. And then. I don't want to scare anyone if I say this, but we've already started sending emails for 2026 lineup. So uh, wow. yeah, wow. it just it just flies, doesn't it? Wow, what a business, isn't it? Really. Uh, so the mm. the next wave is out now. How many ways have we got to go before that's it? Well, we, it's all. It, it kind of depends on on the uptake. We've seen some really strong sales at the start of this year. So um, yeah, I think we'll stay on sale for for a bit with this. Now we've seen some really strong. Um, strong sales and, and yeah let's see what this let's see how it goes yeah brilliant well i can't wait for it uh i can't wait i better get me tickets get them sorted. yeah well look we look forward to welcoming you and yeah uh, tell everyone all about it yeah well, hopefully it yeah anyway thanks for joining us and chatting about it it's uh, been really interesting to find out as you say i mean you don't really speak about these things half the time they just see the gig don't they and they don't know what's going on in the background Mm. And it's interesting. I can tell you it comes with real stress and emotion. It's here. <laughs> stress. Do you think yeah, you've aged a bit? Do you think you've aged a little bit? I had a full head of hair when I started. This. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great chatting to you anyway, Anthony, and uh, I wish you all the best with it. And uh, maybe we'll catch up a little bit nearer the time as well to find out all I the proceedings, that. how it's all going. And maybe you've, you've got a few more artists that you can want to mention as well. As we get a bit nearer to the time and the, and the actual full lineup, you might be able to chat with us about that. Definitely. We always have a few surprises. <laughs> Excellent. It's been great. All the best with it as well. And uh, we'll catch up soon. Thank you very much, Nigel. Thank you for joining us and sharing in the untold stories of the stars. In the world of showbiz, there's always another story waiting to be told. See you next time. It's your